that he did that for a talk about humor, right? <laughs> you got to laugh at these small things. On uh, August 7th, 1991, I did something frightening. I stepped onto the stage on a dare at Wise Guys Comedy Club. And oh my goodness, people laughed. It was amazing. I felt fantastic on that stage and it was the only place I wanted to be because it felt so good to hear all that laughter coming back at me. I felt so connected to the audience and I felt connected to the other comedians in the room too. And I realized, holy mackerel, this laughter is such a great powerful tool to connect people. Laughing together every night with the comics at the club, because after that first night, I was there every night for seven years. I just loved it. I couldn't wait to get back. The reason is because the comics that I worked with back then really cared about my success. We, were, we, we bonded together. We, we really wanted to help one another. We wrote each other's, you know, we said, hey, here's a good idea. Use this, you know. We really were a team. We felt confident. And it was just an amazing place to be at that time. And all I could think of is, man, wouldn't it be great if we could create this kind of atmosphere in our offices and in our schools and in our families where people really want to work together? Because I couldn't wait to get there every night. Imagine a corporate culture with a spirit of enthusiasm and fun where people feel confident and connected to one another where people are happy instead of all stressed out. Well, the reason that's important is because 154 million Americans go to work every day, and 70% of them are disengaged. They just really don't care. They don't feel like part of the team. Not my job. Unfortunately, that costs 500 billion a year in lost productivity. So this is really kind of an important topic, even though the topic is humor. I think we need to figure out how to get people laughing in the workplace. Well, I want to share with you some ideas of, that I have about creating and sustaining a high performance culture. Now, these are not things I learned at my time at Yale or Harvard or Oxford, because of course, I didn't go to any of those schools. <laughs> but I learned it, actually, you know, I. I figured it out at the comedy club, how, how that connection we have with laughter. But I really grew up with a household full of comedians. I come from a very large Italian family. In fact, I have nine sisters. <laughs> well, three, really, but then that one's got six personalities. <laughs> and um, my father was really a funny guy. He was a salesman, and he really connected with people because he was such a funny guy. And he was the number one salesperson in the nation for his company year after year after year. The guy was happy. But the interesting thing about him, he had every reason to be unhappy because my father was a 100% disabled veteran. He had rheumatoid arthritis so bad that you could see the pain in his hands and his feet and the man never once complained. I asked him one time, Dad, how can you be so happy all the time? when clearly you're in constant pain. And he said, the only thing that I can control is the way that I react to the things I can't control. My father was a happy man. He laughed all the time. And that laughter was what got him through the pain. Now, right now, if you would, I want you to feel how that feels to laugh because so many wonderful things happen when we laugh. So right now, if you would, hold on to your tummy, and if you don't have one, hold on to the person next to you. <laughs> hold on. Come on. Let's, everybody's got to roll. Come on. And laugh as hard as you can. On the count of three. <laughs> okay. It feels good. Let me tell you something. 16 major organs in your body are positively affected every single time you laugh out loud like that. It's a great thing, laughter. It releases endorphins, which are our natural painkiller, and lowers our stress and tension, lowers our blood pressure. It even aids in digestion and constipation. And really, who wants to work with people that are constipated? <laughs> it also 
reduces the sedimentation rate, which is connected to inflammation. Now, that's really good news for me because I inherited my father's rheumatoid arthritis. My sister got the house. I'm not bitter. I'm just saying <laughs> that when I laugh, it does help me to reduce the inflammation and therefore the pain, so it's important. Well, Stanford University did a study about laughter, and they said 30 seconds of good hard belly laughter, like we just tried to do, is equal to 10 minutes of strenuous rowing. I was thrilled. <laughs> because I don't like to exercise, I like to eat. So when I heard 30 seconds of belly laughter is equal to 10 minutes of strenuous rowing, I was so excited. I want to get that laughter in every day. I stand in front of a full-length mirror, stark naked, and I just laugh and laugh. <laughs> and the older I get, the easier it is, so hey. <laughs> How do we get that happiness advantage? I'll tell you. First, you've got to make a decision to laugh more and be happy and come from a place of joy. Because when you do that, no matter what's going on in your life, it's easier. And second, you have to decide to make some changes in your workplace. And these three companies really know what they're, what, how to do that. The first one is SeatGeek. Now SeatGeek, all they do is they sit in a cubicle all day long with headset and they help people find seats in theaters. A lot of turnover. Until the boss said, hey, let's have happy hour. Every Friday, we'll get these people together. They'll connect. They'll, they'll start to be friends. And guess what? It solved the problem of turnover. People wanted to come to work. They enjoyed one another. CX Tech is a company right here in Syracuse, and they really know how to have fun at work. They, we walk in there. There's balloons everywhere. It's like going to a party. They have a company cheer every morning. They get together, and they you know, tell people what they did great the day before. They have air hockey when they want to have like a little break. Air hockey, foosball, pool tables. They got their own on-site fitness center. They have a cafe where they serve cappuccino and uh, espresso and all those other j drinks you kids drink. And they also have free snacks. I was so happy when I heard that. I want to go work for them. Free snacks all day long. <laughs> they have a company band. They, have a real, they really know how to have fun at work. But Google has something called the 80-20 rule. 20% 20 of the time, you can work on anything you want to work on. It fosters loyalty and happiness at work. And it also was what, in that 20% of the time, that's how they got Gmail and Google Talk. So it really pays to ch make some changes at your office. Here's the thing. In order to make these changes, you have to first make the decision to be happy, and it has nothing to do with your circumstance. I think my father proved that. So make the decision to be happier in your life, and then take that to work with you. You can change your atmosphere by making some changes, small changes that will bring people together and encourage laughter. Dale Carnegie said people rarely succeed unless they're having fun in what they're doing, and I believe that's true. So go on out there and have fun at work. Be silly. I think that's an idea we're sharing. Thank you.